How's it going everyone? It's K here and today we are going to take a look at the Master Grade Narrative Gundam Verka. So with this kit being a Verka, it does come with water slide decals. And the manual also does have a tutorial on how to apply water slide decals if it's your first time doing them. And the Narrative Verka also comes with these new plastic stickers for the eyes and sensors. Also for the scopes, and here's a closer look. As you can see, there are etched details, which are a very nice addition. And first off is the core fighter, and as you can see, the cockpit does open up, revealing a tiny pilot fig in there. Uh, just be careful with that little uh, window piece on the cockpit, because uh, I've seen some people break it, and on my first try, I did break mine. And here's a look underneath, and that little hole is where you connect your action base. And here it is mounted on top of an action base 8 and as you can see unlike other core fighters this is very angular resembling that of a bird requested by the OVA director as stated here. Now for transforming the core fighter into the core block it's pretty simple you just need to follow the instructions don't be like me who's like skipping around so that you won't run into any problems like I did with the tail fin on the back and once you're all done transforming the core fire here is your core block and as you can see there's a bunch of lines and angles and it's very modern looking now to talk about the build as a whole uh, it's pretty complicated if you are new to master grades as you can see here there's a lot of complicated parts on the legs as well as gimmicks on the chest area there's also a bunch of hidden details underneath which is a shame that some of it gets covered up but since it's the narrative most of it does show up especially around the arms and the leg section which is left armorless. Now when putting on the core block on the lower half you have to make sure that everything is lined up so that it goes down smoothly and on the back you have to make sure that these wings are inside of that waist part or you risk breaking the wings off now to put the top section you have to move the chest sideways just like that and i had trouble putting it on so you hear a snap like that and you're all set and with that you have the narrative gundam assembled you will have to be careful with the core block you're gonna want to hold it underneath the waist and not on the shoulder part because it does have a tendency to pop out if you hold it on the shoulders so yeah, there you have the narrative Gundam without the sea packs. And now onto the articulation, starting off with the head. It does look all the way up, just like that, all the way down. Neck is on a ball joint, so it can turn into a 360. It also moves forward and back, just like that. Now onto the shoulders. The shoulders can go up all the way, just like that. Because of the shoulder armor, it is hampered can turn 360 upwards and over here by the deltoids can turn 360 same with the forearms it does wiggle a little bit over there too double jointed elbows and the shoulder does move forward uh, but the shoulder armor gets in the way but you can move it further away from the chest to get more range now the wrists do move up and down and is on a ball joint so it can turn into a 360. I don't know why I didn't do it there but the fingers are also individually articulated and there is a flip out peg on there. The upper chest can also lean slightly towards the left and right. And now moving on to the bottom half of the narrative Gundam, the side skirts can move up and down. It is on a double ball joint and it is hampered by the waist up there. So can move it down more to get more range out of it and here is what that double ball joint looks like the side skirts can go up but it is hitting that waist uh, section and then it can move in a 360 just like that the back skirt can move up and down only and no side sides on it now for the hips it can flex just like that let me move the front skirt a little bit more up and move the knee section so you go up like that it does have a full knee bend now on the upper thigh part it can move in a 360 just be careful not to hit that section but move it around just like that and your hips can extend backwards just like that a 90 degree you also get a little side to side on the ankles right there you can flex the ankle all the way up just like that and then extend it 
all the way down just like that and at the bottom of the feet you also have this little gimmick which pop out and these are for latching onto debris etc etc and now here this waist section can move in a 360 manner so that you can move the upper body around and back down here you can see there is this little gimmick where you can move the hips so that you can have more articulation on it and since this kit doesn't have an ab crunch there is a little gimmick on the hips where you can have it like lean forward and for the transformation it is pretty simple just follow the manual uh, it'll tell you where to hold on to these parts especially for those floating parts at the sides and have your tweezers ready as well if it is pretty tight and you just have the cycle frame part inserted there and it's just sandwiched underneath and that baby isn't going anywhere and at this little section right there just inserts and mind you it feels like it's gonna fall out but it won't and now just repeat the steps for the other side insert the cycle frame and sandwich and then insert the bottom section and with that done you are one step closer to finishing your build and now for the waist you have to pull out that little blue section and insert the cycle frame on top there and then you just close it and it just sits like that and for the front skirts uh, since I did have the decals on it's just easier to just pop it out like that same thing with the other side just let me hit the camera and then since it is painted it's pretty tight so you'll see me struggling with a lot of these parts and then like that then you remove the front section and replace that big old white part with a cycle frame part and now just get that bottom section up there again and you're basically done with the front skirts and for the side skirts it's also pretty simple just find the right orientation for the cycle frame insert it and then you're just gonna close it back up and once that's done you're done with the side skirts for the back skirts you just flip it up just like that and then pull that to the side and then you insert the cycle frame part with the belt thruster in there and you're done and just repeat that for the other side too and next up is the arms so to start off with the arms you need to slide that little piece up on the top of the shoulder armor and then just press the cycle frame onto it and for the next part that gray section on the shoulder armor is supposed to have a decal on there but since you are going to slide these parts on top it seemed like it would be a waste to put it and then it'll just get scratched off now for the cycle frame part on the forearms of the narrative gundam you're gonna slide this part just above the wrist of the narrative and you're going to separate this part from the forearm and once that's done you're just gonna insert the cycle frame part and once it's in there nice and secured you're gonna move this little forearm piece back there then you're going to slot this back into the arm and you're done. Now for the legs, you're going to want to remove the foot. And once you got the foot out, you're going to flex the toe portion and then move this little piece out. And the orientation for inserting the cycle frame is important. So take note of that. And then once it's in there, you're just gonna close the foot back up and then repeat for the other one and now for the thigh portion there is a little switch on the inside of the thigh i guess i might have accidentally poked it with my tweezers earlier so i didn't get to do that there up next you're gonna move the armor pieces from the knees and then there's also a tiny piece that you're gonna move inside of the knees and then you're gonna insert the cycle frame in there. And then after that, you're going to move the lower knee section up above and then you're gonna hear a click. 
when you do that. Now I placed the upper armor wrong here, so I'm gonna try to fix that. And this is what it's supposed to look like. Now you're just gonna repeat that for the other leg. And last but not least for the legs are these pieces for that little ankle section right there. And you're just gonna repeat that for both of them and then you're done with the legs. And last for the transformation is the backpack. You're gonna open up that little portion in the back. You're gonna slide this baby out. Then you're gonna remove these. I don't know what they're called, but they're the fin funnel holsters. And then I'll just pop those out with my tweezers. And then you're gonna set those aside. And then you're gonna insert that into the backpack. And once it's slotted down in there, you're gonna close it back up and then put the fin funnel holsters back up. And they are designated on which sides are which so that you won't be confused. And you're done. And here is the narrative Gundam with the C-Packs up close. And as you can see, I did put the decals before I put the cycle frame parts because I didn't want to top coat the clear parts. But that also made it harder to transform. And I really love the narrative Gundam's design. That's why I painted all of it. Here's what it would look like if it wasn't painted. The cycle frame also reacts to UV lighting. And the kit does also come with the deactivated cycle frame parts if you want to pose it using Now that. onto the weapons and accessories. Alright, first off is the beam rifle and as you can see here, it does have a little clear plastic on the inside. Uh, I did paint that green and I don't know if you can see it but there is details on it and yeah taking the liberty of putting on the decals and I don't know if you can see but it is two-tone here's the inside and I appreciate the extra details that you can paint in it and the narrative Gundam does have a new gimmick for holding the rifle uh, but you still need to get that little uh, flip out peg from the palm and then you need to remove this little back section from the handle and then you're gonna slide that up towards that little flip out peg in the palm and once you have it in there nice and secure you are going to slide the handle onto that part and you're gonna want to arrange the narrative Gundam's fingers on the position that you want it to so just like that and you can just push that little ball joint up in there and you're done and as you can see here it's holding it nice and secure and if you don't want the narrative Gundam to hold on to the rifle you can also store it back here on the waist the magazine is also removable and you get two of these guys and you can store the extra magazine back on the back skirt just insert it right there and it's not going anywhere up next is the shield and as you can see here i did use the awakened cycle frame parts and back here i just painted it metallic gray and also you can see the missiles on there too and yeah up front i did put the water slide decals and under there it's much easier to just put the decals before you put the front cycle frame parts on there and you can stow the shield on the narrative Gundam's bag if you don't want him to hold it just make sure that this circular part is down at the bottom and then you're just going to insert that little peg into the backpack and like that nice and secure and if you do want the narrative Gundam to hold on to the shield you get these two extra parts over there and you're gonna disassemble the arm section insert that little piece in there and be careful i did put the water slide decal so just be careful especially over here in the wrist section and once you get everything mounted on there you can get the hands and just insert it back to the arm and as you can see here i did use the closed fist hands and then you just insert that to the shield and once the shield is mounted it can swivel and do a 360 on there as well up next is the beam sabers you do get two of these guys i don't know if you can see here but the other ones back there and you also get beam saber effect parts and these guys also do react to uv lighting but there is also a tiny water slide decal on there and if you don't want the beam sabers 
in the backpack you also have this little piece which inserts into the waist and for holding onto the beam saber same thing with the beam rifle you put that little flip out peg out and then you're gonna insert the deeper hole from the beam saber onto that little peg and there you go and circling back to that little beam saber holster you just take your beam sabers and you basically just insert them into those holes but do be careful if you put the decals on beam sabers because it is a pretty tight fit and it's probably going to scratch those decals I got lucky on mine and it didn't scratch it but it is a pretty tight fit and once you're done with that you're basically going to put the holster in the hole right here on the back of the narrative Gundam and if you do do this you're not going to be able to put the beam rifle back there the narrative Gundam also comes with alternative closed fist hands and you also get these landing gears for the core fighter if you want to pose it in a grounded state and last but not least it also comes with a 1-100 standing Yona Basta figure and the narrative Gundam doesn't have an action base adapter but it can still be posed with an action base and it just has this little hole back here and you need to have parts from the action base 4. Now this is an action base 8 but I did take some parts from an action base 4 and as you can see here you just insert that into the narrative Gundam's uh, back and once it's inserted in there you can pose the narrative Gundam any which way that you want and the action base 8 actually surprised me that it can actually hold something the size of the narrative Gundam and for size comparisons here it is right next to the master grade new Gundam Verka in its awakened state and that is exclusive to the master grade Verka version and the narrative Gundam being a prototype of the new Gundam, the new Gundam's funnels can be mounted onto the narrative Gundam's backpack. Now with this funnel placement, uh, it is pretty back heavy so it's gonna tilt towards the side. Now for my final thoughts on this kit, the build was super fun, the engineering is phenomenal. The aesthetic is a nice in-between of the new Gundam and the Unicorn. And in terms of posability, I've seen people from Twitter and Instagram have this guy in some crazy poses. As for the cycle frame gimmick, you can use the gray cycle frame from this guy and put it into the other Master Grade Unicorns. And you can use the cycle frame from the other Master Grade Unicorns and use it on this guy. So if you want the Narrative Gundam to have the blue cycle frame, you can use parts from the MG Perfectability or the MG Phoenix. Or you can just paint the gray one. Now my only complaint is Bandai's water slides. If you don't have Mark Setter, Mark Softer, it'll peel off. And even with those plus top coating, some of it will still peel. Also, the addition of plastic stickers with the etched designs are pretty cool. Now, should you buy this kit, if you didn't like the design, I would tell you that your mind will probably change once you're done building this guy. It looks awesome when you have the C-Packs mounted into it. And also, with the amount of gimmicks that it has for its price point, it's worth it and this guy is 72 dollars so it's not cheap but if you do have the chance to get it i would say go for it you won't be disappointed with your purchase and with that i do hope that you found this video very informative and like the video if you like the video dislike if you dislike i'm not gonna tell you to subscribe if you don't want to